Hello. Well, we're moving on from our swing and jazz styles of last time into something that's probably my most requested style amongst students, which is to play in a blues style. Now, the blues is a, a different animal than anything we've encountered so far, and it's actually impossible to play the blues just using C major because we have blues chords and we have a blues scale which simply don't fit into that palette. But it's not overly complex, and what I want to really pinpoint with this is actually the thing that makes blues sound bluesy is not what you might imagine. It's not as simple as just playing the blues scale. Now, we know we've got that slightly odd blues scale, which is unlike a classical scale. And what's different about that, I suppose, to classical scales is you've got a 12-bar blues, which is a 12-bar sequence which repeats and repeats, and vast amounts of tunes from all over pop genres right up to date to today are based on a blues, like Mercy by Duffy is essentially a blues. And then you've got things like the In The Mood, the Glenn Miller that we played last time, as well as most rock and roll songs are based on 12 bar blues sequences. So a lot of different style of music use blues sequences. And you've got three chords in, if you're playing a blues in C, C, chord of C, chord of F, chord of G. So fairly straightforward harmonically. And you use the one scale of C over those three different chords, which is what makes it slightly unusual. But none of those things, I think, are what really nails the blues down to the blues. Now, we know that originally it was an oral tradition. It came from Africa. It was sung in the history of slavery. It was sung music, and it was transported over to America. And um, one of the things that makes it sound bluesy are two notes, the third and the fifth. Now, if you listen to old blues singers like Bessie Smith, you can hear when they're singing a tune, they'll actually do something that you physically can't do on a piano. They'll hit notes that don't exist on a piano, i.e. a note between the cracks of two notes that you have. So a blue third, for example, is neither a minor third in C or a major third. It's somewhere between. So you get that da-da, that little indefinable thing between it. Now, a trumpet can do this because a trumpet can use their embouchure to play all the way up a total chromatic scale, as it were, with a, every note in between, just sliding up the pitches. A guitar can also do this, because guitarists, you'll often see them bending a string to get this effect of the blue notes, and you're pushing the string, changing its length, and changing the pitch to a note that you can't copy exactly on the piano. So pianists thought, how can we get around this? And the solution was that they thought they would play two notes at once, sliding off one to the second one very quickly, and hopefully fool the ear into thinking that the note in between had been passed through. So you've got this, you hear very much blue third and blue fifth, which is why you hear so much blues phraseology like this. Instantly bluesy. I'm not really doing anything that complex here. I'm just playing very straight seventh chords and using the blues scale, but just falling off that fifth and third. So you get that not really major, not really minor. Now that's a little detail that really instantly makes you think, oh, that sounds bluesy and not quite as complex as you might initially have imagined.